there are some of us here in the meeting room that uh, came a long way to be present uh, with us. And I want to acknowledge that important effort. Uh, and I want to give the floor to, to Katrin Goetzke from, from the uh, uh, International Foundation on, uh, uh, on, and Research on Hope. Uh, Katrin, thank you very much for coming. I know that you've been a very strong advocate and uh, looking forward to hearing from you. Uh, one uh, logistical announcement, we will, we will suppose, we diplomats, we lack, like long meetings, but we wanted to stop short at 12 o'clock. But given the uh, interest and the um, uh, vitality in the room, uh, we will continue uh, for another half an hour. I mean, 25 minutes already now. So, Katrin, please, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you so much for hosting this critical meeting. Uh, it's a critical time for youth mental health. Um, as you mentioned, my name is Katherine Getsky. I'm a representative at the United Nations for the World Federation for Mental Health, and I founded a nonprofit called IFRA, the International Foundation for Research and Education. Started out as depre depression and rebranded to hope based on my story. I'm also an entrepreneur and a businesswoman. Having successfully run the first nationwide cause marketing campaign for mental health, um, I come also with lived experience. My dad uh, died by suicide when I was 18 years old. He was a successful businessman. Uh, he was a great, great dad. I then in my 20s had my own suicide attempt, uh, struggled at a very young age with addiction, anxiety, depression, ADHD, PTSD. Yet this is what I know to be true. What I believe I struggled with fundamentally and what my dad struggled with was hopelessness. And you know, we were never taught what hopelessness is and how to get to hope. So I'd like to suggest hope as a strategy for mental health. Um, as it's been clearly established through experts um, like my mentor, Dr. Myron Belfer, that hopelessness is the primary symptom of depression and a key symptom of anxiety. Hopelessness is predictive of all risky behaviors in youth, violence, partner violence, addiction, self-harm, that hopelessness is the single consistent predictor of suicide. And 10 years ago, suicide prevention focused primarily on restricting access to means um, and 800 numbers, suicide hotlines. And while those are critical, I knew it was never going to save me or my dad. And so I set out to figure out how to teach hope. Um, we were able to prove out our theory that hope is a teachable skill um, and our program Hopeful Minds was recognized as an innovation by the World Bank. And we've been able to show that as you increase hope, symptoms for anxiety and depression decrease. You know, we all experience moments of hopelessness, every one of us, and it's time to normalize that and ensure we all know how to manage those moments and get back to hope. In adult interventions, there's a four to one return on investment for mental health interventions. We know for youth, it's a 23 to one return on investment or greater. So it makes good business sense. Hope is a protective factor for anxiety and depression. I spoke here at the UN in 2015 on International Day of Persons with Disabilities to advocate getting mental health included in the sustainable development goals. And you did, and I wanna thank you for that. Today, I'm asking you to prioritize mental health and to consider passing a resolution for an International Day of Hope at the United Nations, where we elevate science stories and strategies for hope so that we ensure all around the world know how to measure their hope and are equipped with skills to increase their hope, especially our children. As hope is not just important for mental health, hope impacts all SDGs, poverty, education, gender equality, clean water. We cannot achieve these goals without hope. Today, one of my supporters, Chef Grace Ramirez, is here with us over there. Um, Chef Grace is the global ambassador for the World Central Kitchen, where yesterday seven of her team members were killed in Gaza. They died delivering aid. And I ask, what kind of world are we living, are, are we leaving for our children? I really believe it's time that we start working together. We start working to find our way back to hope. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Catherine, and uh, thank you for your advocacy. And <clears throat> that's a concept that I think we should all take with us. I, I, I take from what Professor Solomon was saying. You know, vitality is important. Hope is important, and is part of the of the whole conversation.